In this video, we'll write the electron configuration for Sn, Sn2+, and Sn4+. That's tin, the tin-2 ion, and tin-4 ion. So, in short, this is the electron configuration for tin, neutral tin, just Sn. If we look at the periodic table, here's tin right here. And we can tell tin has atomic number 50. Since all these elements here are neutral, 50, that's the atomic number, which means the number of protons. It also means the number of electrons. So if you add all these superscripts up, it's going to equal 50. And there's two ways we can write the electron configuration for tin and its ions. First, we can use this table here. And there's a link in the description on how to do that. I prefer to use a method where we divide the periodic table into orbital blocks to write the electron configuration. Let's take a look at that. So here's our tin, and the periodic table is divided up into orbital blocks. We have the S block, D block, and P block. Tin is in the P block. So if we want to look at the configuration, we see it's in the fifth row, the fifth period, 5P1, 5P2. So it should end with the configuration 5P2. We could go up to 5P6 here. We have six electrons. But tin, it only has 50 total electrons, so it has to end in 5P2. Before the 5p, we have 4d. d orbitals can hold up to 10 electrons. So we have d1 through 10, and here's our 4d. Before that, 5s, 1, 2. So we have 5s, 2, and then up here, 4p. p's can hold up to 6, 4p, 6, and so on. So this is another way you can find the electron configuration for 10. Let's write this in a condensed notation, and then we'll go back to work on the ions. So to write in a condensed notation, what we're going to do is we're going to find the noble gas that's before tin. So if we go this way here, here's Kr, krypton. So we write Kr, we put brackets around it. Krypton has 36. So if we count 36 electrons, this right here would be the electron configuration for krypton. So all we have to do is add this part right here on the end. So we have Kr. So this is the condensed electron configuration for tin. Let's use this to talk about those ions. So when we look at this configuration, the valence electrons are in the S and the P here. So these are our valence electrons. So when tin forms ions, we're going to end up losing these first. So first we'll lose the 5P2. That'll give us this. Since we've lost these two electrons here, this is the new electron configuration for tin 2 plus. It's 2 plus because we've lost valence electrons. When we lose electrons which are negative, we end up with a positive ion. For tin 4 plus, we're not going to lose from the D here. We're going to lose from the S. Remember, we said the S and the P, these are the valence electrons. So we're going to lose these electrons right here. Then we'll have this for SN4 plus. So this is the electron configuration for Sn4+. Sometimes you'll see the electron configuration for tin written where the 5s is after the 4d10. The reason that's done is because those are the first ones to be ionized. But most often you'll see it written this way because the 4d is a little bit higher energy than the 5s2. This is Dr. B with the electron configuration for Sn, Sn2+, and Sn4+. Thanks for watching.